Hello everyone, Jane A here from Your Way Weight Loss and today we're talking about showing up. Hi Leash. Hey. Today's a fun conversation, like a pep talk. If you are looking for a pep talk, this is it guys. This is your moment. Um, it's a great, it would be a great podcast for while you're walking or doing your laundry. Mm. Mm. I mean, those- everyone needs a pep talk while they're doing their laundry. <sighs> I Wednesday's laundry day for me. I do Wednesday and Sunday. That's my that's my system. And uh, today I already gave myself a laundry pep talk. Alicia, you have today to put Wednesday. it. Yeah, and you're and you're the. I always start the process, but today you have to start and end the process because like okay. you're going away this weekend. Like you don't mm. want laundry on the bed. Mm. Um. Every time I do the laundry. And every time it's like all clean and I'm like, wow, that is very satisfying. Makes me so sad that it's like, you will have to redo this for the rest of your life. Like, (laughs) also, it's already over. Like, by the time I do the laundry, get it folded and put away, there's almost a full load of laundry again. Uh, Yes, exactly. In the hamper. Mm -hmm. In the hamper. Yeah. Hamper. Do you use that word, hamper? I do. Yeah. The way you said it, it was just so like... (laughs) Did you see the girl that commented on our live where she's like so happy you said the word pop? Yes. Said, I thought it was a Michigan thing. Uh, and I was like, oh, soda. Soda, yeah. yeah. Totally pop. Um, <laughs> also, I love the way that you said salsa in our little, oh my gosh. I didn't even know, you know, okay. So I rewatched obviously our commercial a bajillion times. And when you laughed, when I said, you know, I said for me, it's salmon, broccoli and salsa and you laughed and I didn't know why you were laughing. And then you're like, is that how you say salsa? Salsa? Uh, anyways, I don't even know how I say it. Is it, I would say salsa. Is that okay? Yeah. I would say salsa. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I actually had salsa with my supper last night and I thought of you. What was your supper? Everyone wants to know. It was actually so good. The kids were having, what did they have? They had, oh, they had like pizza and I didn't want to have that. So I made myself uh, an egg white omelet with cheese and I had like veggies on the side with dip. It was so good and so fresh. So wow. simple. Yes. Yeah, so simple. But that's so funny because part of my list was egg whites and salsa. And yeah. you know what I mean? So that for me is a very like, uh, it's a plate, like an egg white omelet with salsa for me is very much like past diets for breakfast you know 100 I mean? that's like diet food yeah exactly it's been labeled that way in my brain i need to yeah. change it it's very nutritious it's very good it's also colorful and like you said fresh 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 um i'm going to go get my whole body lasered i'm jealous mm-hmm. i had to cancel my appointment I know. Um, I don't know like what I, I don't know where I'm at in my appointments. She just like sent me a message. She's like, girl, we didn't make you an appointment. I'm like, I'm ignoring you. Okay. I don't know why. Like it's hurting me every time I go, like I'm being a big baby lately. And I, I started with my, my cha-cha and everything was fine. <laughs> I was waiting for the word you were going to use. I didn't know like cha-cha, vagina, all of it. I did um, so. And I think that what happens guys is that when I just did that part of my body, um, front, back, all of it. It was like a five minute ordeal. It's quick, painful, but quick. But when I go now, I legit get the whole, my whole body underarms, arms, mustache, legs, uh, cha-cha, all of it. So it's like in one hour appointment. And it just, at one point I'm like kicking her. I'm like, stop, like, stop it right now. I don't. And then obviously my experience in my brain reminds me of the pain I've gone through. And I'm like, weird that I started and it was like the most painful part, I would say, is, you know, getting your vagina lasered. And I didn't feel that way, but now I do. So I'm like scared to go see her. I'm so glad that you went through the process and convinced me to go through it when it was still not that painful. Because if if it was this, I probably wouldn't have gone through with it all. Right. Right. Um, how's your regrowth? Like, is it pretty good? Um, I mean, she needed, I was obviously being, so the reason why I think that I was like, oh, this is not that bad when I was just doing, uh, my bottom half, I was like, my setting was really low. So now she's like, we're doing like it, the results were like, as she wanted, she's like, so next time we're like upping the game girl. And so now I see the real, um, pain that it's supposed to be. Okay. Um, but it's like, obviously it's, 
there's no magic. Like everyone's body's different. Uh, the regrowth is way less than it was before. So that's basically what I wanted. And I just keep doing touch-ups as I, as I wish. And I would never go back. Like I oh. would never go back to the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, this might be too much information, but like after I got my first session, how many times did I tell you how much I love my vagina? <laughs> so many times. You thought you were a porn star for a second. <laughs> it just feels like so good. And then I'm like, no wonder the people that I see their pictures and their area is all like smooth. And uh, and I'm like, how does that happen? Like mosaic and tit bus and like whatever. Oh, they get it lasered. That's mm -hmm. why. It's that I think it's that part that I love the most. Like, I mean. I mean, shaving takes a minute. It's but the same. It's not it's, even it's the not, not the shaving. Time. It's not yeah. the time. It's the look. Huh? It's also the always readiness. So I don't know if you've had this experience, but I certainly have in the summer. Our friends are like, hey, come for, to our pool. I'm like, just a second. Need to trim my bush. Just a second. No, legit. Give me an hour because I need to make sure that I look like a six-year-old after. <laughs> Hand me the razor. Oh, I need another one. And then it's like, it's only pretty for one day because it keeps growing. And then yeah. you have to wait. Yeah. No, it's the, it's the, um, put efficiency, but, uh, that it's very flexible. What's the word I'm looking for? There's a, there's an adjective for what I'm looking for. Anyways, I love it. I would never go back. Also, I had really hairy arms without knowing. Do you yeah. My arms? Mm -hmm. Um, they're looking really good. Smooth. Everything's smooth. I'm just like and one of those fancy cats with no yeah. hair. It's the goal. <laughs> I'm here for it. Okay. We're doing a really good job about talking about showing up. This is a great pip talk, everyone. Okay. So back to what we said we were going to talk about. Yes. Okay. Showing um, up. So what do you mean by showing up? Okay. So here's the thing. Um, when reading The Atomic Habit, he really emphasized the importance of repetition and that to create a habit, it's not about having that perfect um, moment or perfect plan or perfect lifestyle, that repetition builds a habit, just a repetition of showing up. And he even went right far to say, you know, going to the gym is not the habit you're trying to um, get to. It's getting in your car <laughs> or having your stuff ready to then get to your car. Driving to the gym is the first habit. And he said, and then obviously I built on to like, just that's how I, I roll, right? You tell me one word and I build on it and, and kind of connect weight loss to it. But what I'm thinking is if you end up showing at the gym and you just say, all I have to do is show up in the parking lot at one point, at one point you're going to go in. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And like, because you're going to be showing up. You're going to be, you're going to be a part of, well, might as well you know, cause I'm here type thing. So it's not about being perfect at the gym, but just showing up. Um, and I mean the same thing, like for my walks, you know, most of the time it's not hard for me to convince myself to go for a walk, but I, I often, if, if that ever happens, I just say, you just have to go. It can be 10 minutes. It can be, you know what I mean? It never is, but it's just, it's just showing up. Also not putting that pressure of this has to be a 10 K walk. This has to be your fastest walk. That really helps me to show up is taking the pressure off of perfection. Yes. Yes. Everything that Alicia said. Yes. I was just thinking about that. Like when people are like, how do you end up walking, you know, every single day, basically I just wake up and, and the goal is always today. You have to move your body. So there's no like words more than today. You have to figure out a time. Is it tonight? Is it this morning? Is it this afternoon? And then depending on every single day, so different. I'm like, okay, today I have to pick up Dia. So today it'll be, I have like about one hour. It'll be from this time to this time. And guys, that needs to be planned. Like you have to at least plan for success. You have to at least plan to show up. Um, but once you, once the showing up part is, is kind of done, whatever you accomplish is good enough. Yep. So I think that's the message we want is that, yeah, you have to show up for results. Absolutely. But the repetition of showing up is what's going to build your habit and not, well, I have a habit of walking 10K, so it needs to be 10K. No, I have a habit of walking. I have a habit of moving my body. I have a habit of prioritizing time for movement. So that that in itself is enough. And when it comes to weight loss, let's talk a bit about how I don't know where we got lost as a society of trying to perfectionize what it looks like. 
Is it because we like deal with other types of programs where they perfectionize the program and give it to the person? Can we talk, like, think about that leash. You know, we're one of the only weight loss programs that does not give a perfect way of doing things to our clients. Like we do not, we actually like don't do that at all. We're like the opposite. We're like, here is a way of thinking, go for it. You know, is that why that most of society is, is like, can't, you know, I don't know, can't go to the gym because don't know what to do there. Like you need someone to tell you, just show up and, and I don't know, lift something that is not too heavy and just show up, be in the environment. And I mean, it's just, imagine if you're on your meal plan was, you know, a cup of cottage cheese, you know, don't have cottage cheese in your fridge and then you don't know what to do. And then you blow the rest of the day because you're like, oh, I didn't have cottage cheese. Whereas just like anything in that moment is, is enough. Like, I think, I, I also think a lot of the whole perfectionism, a prioritizing perfectionism over repetition comes a lot from the whole all or nothing approach. I like it. And I for sure struggled with those kind of mindset pieces. Um, I was very all or nothing. So let's say I didn't have enough time to get a 12K walk-in, I would do nothing. Whereas now if I have 30 minutes, I'm like, I'm going to go my ass. I'm going to basically run, walk. Yes. I'm going to walk fast enough that I'm not running. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to make the most of that 30 minutes. And that's been a mindset shift for me away from the all or nothing and away from just that repetition is enough. Oh, I had something good in my head while you were talking about the all or nothing. I'm also oh, thinking yes. about, oh, go ahead. I got it. Go. It's the knowledge. I don't feel like I need to do all or nothing leash because of knowledge, because of how I know a body works. So be, I know how my, I know how a body loses weight <laughs> and I know how a body gains weight now and I understand it. So I'm not afraid of not having, you know, cottage cheese or having cottage cheese, or I'm not afraid of going off my own plan because that's not the answer to success. Like it's, it's the knowledge and it's the fear of failure. And it's also experience. Yeah. Knowledge plays a huge piece in the puzzle, um, you know, of, of the whole all or nothing thing is that knowing that, you know, let's say, for example, if you were a person that had a handful of mini eggs yesterday, but you, that person looked at the back. Are you talking about a friend? <laughs> hypothetically speaking. <laughs> that person looked at the back and said, okay, for 12 mini eggs, it's 180 calories. No problem. And there was no drama. There was no, you know, because there's the knowledge piece of that, that, that mini eggs are not bad. That's exactly what I meant when I said the knowledge piece behind, behind how a body works. And, and it's the drama that brings the all or nothing. If you have 12 mini eggs and you've labeled and you don't have knowledge on what that means to your body and your journey, you're going to go and eat the whole bag. Um, I did this uh, TikTok with M&Ms. And it was just a, yeah, it was a good one. And basically it was just to say like, I can eat mini eggs if I want to eat mini eggs type thing. And it was just like to contradict diets with uh, no carbs, no sugar anyways. And, uh, you know, the comments made me kind of like, oh, like people are like, how did you fit it in your I know. deficit? Um, how did you, you know, how did you know? But, but I'm like, well, first of all, I don't know how many I ate. I, I'm guessing around four for the, for the TikTok. I didn't finish the bag because I actually personally don't really enjoy M&Ms, but it's the only thing I could find in my pantry that really fit the, the, the TikTok I wanted to make, you know? Um, and also, uh, I looked and the whole bag was 250 calories. I'm like, ah, oh, probably half 125. No problem. Like that can be fit, fit in anywhere, you know, like, come Absolutely. on, it's 125 calories. Absolutely. Are you telling me there. I need to make a, a TikTok today with my bag of mini eggs? Yep. That's exactly what you need to do. I bought um, like a big bag. Oh, see, I saw that you did a TikTok where you like ate a, a, you know, bites of things. That's you also like, I know, I also see someone that's not scared of like taking a bite here and there and not like, oh, I can't, you know, eat or ruin my day. Like that's like, that's next level leash. I thought that was great. I was dedicated to that TikTok because like I was done eating that day. I was not even hungry. I actually had to take my Invisalign out after brushing my teeth. Oof, Tell me at the work. end that you saw me put my hand in the Nutella. Oh, I, I got right to the end and people loved it. 
Um, I also want to talk about, okay, so all or nothing, a lot of uh, something else specific to weight loss that holds people back, I think is food prep, meal prepping. Mm. So people are often frozen with the thought of perfection instead of just focusing on showing up and repetition and just anything is better than nothing. So it's yeah. almost like super fancy Pinterest meal, meal prep versus or- nothing. Mm. Mm. And also it's, it, whew, I have so much to say. I, I want to do a, a podcast at one point about meal plans, but I'm like, you have a meal plan. Like you have one. I, I just feel like we always need to go and see what others. And I think what's important when you get ideas is to incorporate the ideas that interest you in your own meal plan. But it is not to like go and, and either comment on someone's meal plan or think that that meal plan is special. Like a meal plan is just a bunch of food that a, one other person consumed in a day, you know? So you have that already. And and so, yeah, that's, uh, we need to talk about that in another podcast. But for me, this pep talk is about stop thinking that, in order to lose weight, there's a certain look to it. There's a certain amount of showing, like of a certain amount of time put for this and that and boo, 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 like everything is highlighters and whatever. Showing up is enough and your repetition is what puts you on a path. So whether that path is where you want it to be, like as actual value to you or not, you are always on a path. Right now you're repeating something on a day-to-day basis that is putting you on a path. Do you like this path? Or do you like the life you're living right now? Um, so I, I do think that's also important to, to, to remind ourselves that we are in a current path of repetition of something else right now. And that in order to act differently, there's no perfection needed. It's just to start repeating the other way. And people think that they need a hu- they need to go completely 90 degrees to get on the other path. But we yes. know that you can't do that, that you need to make changes that are just tiny, small, incremental changes that are just you showing up. Yeah. And is that enough this week, today for weight loss? I don't know. But mm-hmm. is it enough to get you eventually on the path you want to be? Yes. And yes. it's actually the only way to get on that path. It is the only way to get on that path and stay there is repetition. And you will only repeat something that is easy for you. Like you, someone asked me today, how are you so consistent? And I said, it's what I'm consistent with. It is the system behind what I'm working on. I'm working behind the scenes to make sure I can be consistent. And repetition is massive. Someone asked me once if eating the same thing makes the journey easier. And I was like, absolutely not. I mean, at the end of the day, what I mean is absolutely not. For me, it makes it easier, not because of eating the same thing, because it's Jose. Jose likes, that makes me happy. That helps me be consistent. That's my way. For someone else, eating the same thing every day could be super hard for them and not their way and and really does not allow them to... Uh, take into account what they value and what they they like to do. So yes and no, depending on what you need to be consistent with is not eating a salad every day. What you need to be consistent with is showing up for you and doing what you want to do. Be consistent with that, with what you value all the time. Be consistent with what you value. Great podcast is coming up on expectations versus standards as well. Like there's just like that there are no expectations other than the ones that you put on yourself. Like there is no expectation for you to be perfect, to lose weight. Like it's not needed. And that's what can help you to get out of that cycle of focusing on perfection is stop putting a number on your goal and a timeline and a timeline. Like if your goal is to just be better, show up as the person you want to be slowly work, you know, work towards this end game, then it does feel enough. Because if your goal this week was to lose two pounds and you didn't lose two pounds, then you feel like you're not enough because you weren't perfect. But it's not about perfect. It's about showing up repeatedly as the person that you want to be or the person that you're working towards being. I was thinking about how the only way you can celebrate, like I was thinking how I'm I'm really proud that I've been like a spin instructor for 10 years and how how your weight loss is now, you know, going into their 10th year of of existing. And I'm like, the only way you get to say those words and you get to say like we're celebrating 10 years is by showing up for 10 years. Was it perfect? 
Was it ever like, did we do everything right? And, and did we follow the perfect business plan and all of that stuff? No, there was growth and ups and downs and all of it. But the only way you can say, this is where I'm at today is because I showed up for 10 years, not because I was perfect for 10 years. Right. Um, and that's the piece as well. Like yesterday was my day for, uh, answering, uh, questions on Instagram and someone's like, how long did it take you? And I'm like 20 years, like to create who I am today, like I had kids. I like, there's so, so much that has happened in the last 20 years to create the, per like this all started 20 years ago. Uh, and, and from my max to my lowest right right now is 70 pounds, but it really wasn't, it took me, it's not about the pounds. It's about who I am today. That took 20 years, you know? And, and like the, the journey continues. It's, yeah, it's not over. 21. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not over. Um, and you just kept showing up. It's it's rep repetition. I mean, we had a virtual event um, in January, which was amazing. And we had mm -hmm. a speaker named Martin La Tulip. And uh, he really, Proud one of, of his messages that he gave uh, the P our members and people watching was just one, two, three, go. Yeah. Like if you guys are listening to this podcast and you've been like wanting to. Procrastinating. Guys, just go take the first steps. I see myself procrastinating things I want to be perfect. My weight loss, certain work tasks, any, you know, ridiculous things. Just go take the first step and know that the first step is enough. Yeah. Whatever it is. Because in order to get the results you want, you do not need perfection. You need repetition. And you perfection, perfection isn't a thing. It's not a thing. What does Perfect that even mean? What does that even mean? So guys, the message, repetition and showing up is enough. Okay. Oh, hopefully they're like, okay, I'm doing it. I don't know what you're trying. Like, I don't know where they're going after this, but I feel like it's good things. <laughs> You got this. Uh, uh, you got this. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. This was a fun pep talk. Um, have a fantastic rest of your day. Find us on, come see us on Instagram. We're obviously there. Um, find us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook under Your Way Weight Loss or our website, yourwayoursupport.com. Give us a thumbs up, reviews, all of the positive things that you can do. Thank you. Tell your friends. Bye. Bye.